Alcohol Link Basics, talking about masking fluid. So hang on, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and have some fun. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite products to use with alcohol ink. Uh, this is masking fluid and this particular company, Fine Line, is what I use most of the time. I love the fluid, not so crazy about the applicator, uh, but I have, think I have found a solution. The applicator itself, let's see if I can do this one-handed, has a very fine nib. It comes in two different sizes, but Let's see, and inside the lid, I don't know if you can see this, there's a little bitty needle, right? Or it's not a needle, but let me zoom in. It's a little point, and the point goes inside that, allowing it to stay nice and clean and clear of stuff, because this stuff will dry pretty quickly and will clog up this little needle. So. Yeah, definitely when you're uh, done using this, if you do decide to use this from straight from the applicator, uh, when you're done, put this uh, cap on immediately. And if by some chance it does get clogged, uh, use a, uh, a needle, like um, a sewing needle or something like that to put in there because it's such a tiny hole that most of the fine, uh, like pinning needles, uh, will work really well with this. So be prepared for a lot of... Um, tedious work with a needle, but the solution is top notch. I love the solution. So let's see if I can do this one handed. I'm going to give myself a chance if I don't do, aha. Okay. So I'm just going to put it on there for now. All right. What I have done and I find this works real, really well. You see me use these little guys with uh, filling them up with uh, alcohol or making solutions with alcohol and like resin art uh, pigments um, or even the uh, Alumilite stuff. Well, they also work great with this masking fluid and the point is fine enough that it's not having much of a problem. Now they come with these little tops and it, it usually has a little ring on the end of it and it stays attached to the bottle. Most of the time I find I just end up getting rid of the ring anyway, but that's just me. Anyway, um, same thing applies. So as soon as you're done, put the little top on there so it won't dry up. But I think the hole is just slightly bigger than the one from the uh, fine line applicator, but for some reason the design of the nozzle uh, keeps it from getting clogged up as fast. So that can be really frustrating and also when you're drawing a line that it doesn't draw a line and then go blob and then draw a line blob. So I want my lines to be as smooth as possible um, if I can do that and this applicator does seem to do the blobs whereas this one does not. Uh, so I'll enough talk about that. What I have done is I quickly drew out some lines and that's on a piece and I'm putting that to the side so it can dry while I apply some lines to this. And then once that's dry, we can add some ink to it and see what happens. So, all right, let me get set up. All right, I will show you this right now. So I have drawn in some lines really quickly. Some of them are super wide. I've got dots in here, but the thinner lines here, you see how they're starting to go a little bit transparent that's when you know it's drying. So these actually, these little blobs here are still opaque white, but they will go transparent like that. So that's something to look for when you're looking to see if it's dry. You can dry it a little bit with like a, a, a hair dryer or something like that to kind of speed up the process. But because it'll have like a bubble-like effect on, let's see if you can see some texture. Yeah, so some of the thicker areas might have a skin on top of it that's dry, but underneath it's not. So I wouldn't advise doing that too much because if you're messing around with this and applying alcohol, 
ink to it, moving it around, all of a sudden you bust that skin, then that, that fluid runs and you've got a big mess. So wait till it's all clear before you apply your alcohol ink. So that's important. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of additional colors to this, just to kind of vibrant, uh, make them a little bit more vibrant and a little bit different from the piece I did originally. So adding a bunch of yellow and some pink and some orange, that ought to really make it pretty bright. I still got a little bit of gilded uh, alloy on there that you'll see moving around and stuff, and that's fine. All right, actually that's mostly orange now. <laughs> to this and let's see that's blue violet that ought to really that's some drama don't have my paper taped down so that is why it is blowing away but I'm also working with like a little five by seven keep on working on drying this up real well change out my paper and then we'll get started on doing some masking fluid so I'll be right back okay so I believe this guy is dry got a neat nice little neat surface here and got our masking fluid and I'm literally gonna draw some horizontal lines here I'm not worried about it dotting and I'm kind of going off the page a little bit and that's okay. That's just to keep my flow going. I'm kind of intentionally picking it up so it does dot now. with some of the pattern a little bit. Now I will tell you this much, if you're going over an area that has started to dry and you're putting another fine line in there next to it, uh, sometimes because it's latex or kind of like rubber cement, uh, it'll bond with the tip easily. So be mindful of that. If you've got something that is starting to dry, it will pick it back up again. So do some more little dashes in here. It's kind of fun to mess with this stuff. Think of it this way. You could create a really neat little plaque background um, and have a lot of wild colors on there and then write somebody's name out really pretty, like a, say your daughter's name. I'll say Bethany and have it really fancy and calligraphy oriented. And then you flood the background again after this is dried with another col color 
and then when you peel it off, you can get that name really popping out. But if you do that, think in ways of contrast. Like for example, um, I could have a wash right now, really light colors, and then write the name Bethany on there. I don't know why Bethany popped in my head, but it did. Uh, write the name Bethany on there, let it dry completely, and then when you do your wash, your wash on top of it is really, really dark. And the reason for that is when you go to pull it up, you want to be able to read it. But if you have two colors that are similar, so like you have a, uh, a blue and a violet color and they're very close in tones, you might not be able to read the word well, unless that's what you intended. So again, design on intentional design. So if the intent is to be subtle, then make your colors similar. So I'm gonna put this guy back on here cause I am done with him and I want him not to plug up in my needle so you can already see that the the lines right in here where you can see kind of pink coming through those are starting to dry so sometimes it can not take very long obviously the thicker lines are going to take a little bit longer all right I'm gonna put this guy to the side and I'll come back when they're dry all right here's an update on this guy he has been put to the side while I was doing the background of the other piece and also doing the lines of the other piece. So it's had a chance to get mostly dry on the thin lines, but on the thick lines, you can see how, let me zoom in. It seems to do better on the focusing on it if I zoom in. But see how there's a kind of a ghosted clear line around the clouded bubble. So that area there definitely is not dry in the center. And I don't want to risk it. I want it to dry a lot more. So if it's like that, I might do it. But if it's like that where it's definitely opaque and clearly white inside or that, that bluish color, I'm not going to risk it. So I'm looking for more of that all over. So we still need to wait a little bit more on that one. Okay, I think this one is dry enough for us to go to the next step. So there's a couple little spots here that have a little bit of white to them. But if you see, this is mostly surrounded by dry. So I think we're okay. Now I will show you a spot. Now I gotta find it again. Okay. Let's see, can it come up on camera? Hardly at all. Okay, so there's a spot right there where it wasn't completely dry yet and I accidentally touched and it kind of broke that skin. And that's what I was talking about before. So. It is a little tricky handling these things when you have gloves on because gloves naturally want to peel this stuff up. So be careful, you'll be okay. <laughs> All right, I've got a lot of pigments on here and or uh, a lot of ink on here right now. I could literally just coat this with alcohol, move the alcohol around and that would be enough. But I'm probably not gonna do just that so what I think I might do is get a brush and maybe remove some of it and then I have a surprise so yeah I think that's gonna be my plan all right got a little bit of alcohol in a cup and you know what let's go for a fast removal I'm gonna use a sponge brush to dip into the alcohol so I got one of these guys of course I picked up a red one which will be fun to see with the contrast. So let's go for this one. I got a pack of these, I think it was at Michael's or something like that. And they're, you know, a bunch of different colors. So I'm literally just dipping it into alcohol. And I got quite a bit of that scooped up. And I'm going to just simply rub it across and do some removals or just relocate some of the colors. Gonna make a big mess on my paper towel. All right, let me move some of these over this way and go back and forth. I think that might be enough. No, that's not gonna get much better than that. Okay, now that I made a huge mess, 
What I'm also gonna do is I've got a color here. Wait a minute, is there much in here? There's a little bit in here. Okay, so this is a Rainbow by Malibu. And what it does is it adds a nice little sparkly. You see the lid, there should be some sparkles like right here on the lid. So I'm gonna add some of this like all over this background here. I don't have much in this bottle, so I am literally using this bottle up. But this is one of those products that once it dries, it doesn't really reactivate. So it's kind of like a, some of the mixatives will do the same thing, like white's one of those. But white will move with blending solution. I have not tried blending solution on top of this, so I don't know if it'll move. All right, I think I'm pretty well coated. All right, let me dry that up a little bit. you can see it it adds a nice little shimmer to it like a very fine glittery kind of shimmer very pretty color all right Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put this guy to the side and work on the next one. Give it a little bit more time to dry. Now, what I would recommend is when that piece does dry, go and spray it with a sealer. Uh, what that does is it helps from transferring when you're removing the masking fluid. Uh, you might get some ink on your finger and you might transfer it to the areas that you're exposing. Um, so the sealer helps prevent that a little bit, um, but that's an option. I'm not going to do that in this case because these are kind of more of a play pieces. So this one is a little bit on the risky side. I've got some big dots here that are not as clear as I'd like them. All right, I'm going to put a little heat on this. Hang on. All right, it's a little bit drier, so we're going to risk it. Now I'm gonna do an alcohol bath and put some um, light blue on top. So it's gonna reactivate all those inks that are exposed right now. And I'm gonna put pool on here, which is kind of a real light turquoise. And we're gonna move that around. I'm hoping that'll give enough contrast. I really want to reactivate the colors that are underneath here. So that's why I'm kind of mechanically moving this around a bit. Now remember that alloy is still in the background. So it may make its appearance known. I doubt that's going to disappear.
put that to the side and let it dry more. All right, while that other piece is drying, I'm gonna pull off a few of these lines here. Let me zoom in while I do that. So I'm gonna start here in the corner. And literally, it's easier to do it with your bare hands. Keep in mind, you might get a little ink on them. Um, and uh, I don't know if I said this before, I'm pretty sure I did or not. Anyway, normally on a piece, I would do a spray UV sealer on it and that way when you're starting to roll these up uh, the ink doesn't transfer from like your finger back to the piece that you're exposing uh, you don't contaminate it but in this case we're just going to go for it so literally the stuff kind of just rolls off you remember in the day when you're in school and you play with elmer's glue and you'd put it on your your skin like on your, your hands, and then you would let it dry, and then you would peel it up. It's kind of like that. It's a, um, a lot of fun. And I find that when I'm working on projects around people that I'm using this stuff, and then they realize that stuff peels off, it's all they can do to keep their hands off of it. And they're like, I want to peel it. In fact, I've had a few projects where my sons have come in and helped me with removal because it's just fun. Okay, so I've been rolling it off on there, and you see I got a little bit on my finger, but since I'm using similar tones on both the background and the foreground, uh, I'm not that worried about it. And you see it doesn't take a whole lot of time to remove these, and sometimes you can get them going, and you can just pull the string up. That's just like that. Very satisfying. Sometimes you can get a rubber cement pickup eraser to help you get these off, but because they get coated with ink, they may not pick up as easily. So your finger does enough that it can uh, rotate some of these nibs off enough that you can pick it up with your finger and start pulling it across. I'm going to do a little bit more and then I'm going to show you the contrast you get because it's kind of fun. Okay. So here's that and you see how you can see the shimmer. So the shimmer is only on the areas where it did not have the resist. But in these other areas it gets darker. So you can get a really nice patterns going on, designs. Uh, you can draw outlines of creatures, people, or whatever. Uh, it could be a way of trapping an area, like if um, I wanted to have a triangle that's blue and I didn't want it to bleed into, say like you're doing a girl's dress or a drawing or a painting of a girl's dress. If you wanted to have little blue triangles everywhere, you can do the resist either it dams the color inside and you just paint the blue inside or you're covering up like the spot and then you want the blue to go around and you want to keep that the same color as the background so think of it in two different applications so super easy to use great tool to have in your back pocket well not literally in your back pocket but you know in your toolbox for creating art. All right, let's check out this guy. So this came out and you can see the alloy in the background. It gives it that luster shimmer look to it. And it almost kind of has a uh, patina look to it. So we're gonna, let's see, am I on camera? Nope. Okay, now I am. I'm gonna roll this guy off. And we're going to show some of the purples and blues in the background. This one was a little bit more subtle of a contrast. Some areas might be a little darker.
And you can always go in with a brush with a little bit of alcohol if you've got an area that got messed up and just very gently, let's see, I got a brush here. But like very gently go in and, and blend something in or repair something. Really satisfying to get a line. So I had my friends Scarlett and Carrie come for a visit one time and we set up Carrie with a project and uh, she did a panel for her son with his name on it and uh, we were about to videotape her peeling it up and it was all she could do to wait to peel it up. She was just so excited about this part, part of the process and it's addicting. So there's a lot more to peel up, but I'm not gonna do all of them right now. You see there, you get some line, some patterns going on. It's just a matter of what you wanna show. If you want something subtle, something a little bit more dramatic, even this is kind of subtle because the shades are similar, but you're getting some contrast here, whether it's light here or dark here. And that's what I was kind of going for so I could show you the similarities, as well as, um, uh, mixatives or things like that that will show the contrast as well. All right, so have fun with this. hit the subscribe button but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up there you go